Okay, so this is the part one of the 2D parameter studies using SOLIDWORKS and ICEM. Um, I'm Kenny Broberg. I was on the 2012-2013 um, Super Mileage team of Cedarville University. Now you want to open up your SOLIDWORKS model for your uh, specific parameter study. Um, for me, I'm doing a front height study for this particular test. Now, you want to open up your specific uh, curve that you want to be testing as your cross-section. For me, it's the, uh, I'm looking on the side, so it's my two horizontal guide curves. You want to copy those, so control C, then open up a new part. Now you want to sketch on the front plane, and the reason we do this is because we do not want the Z coordinates when we um, get our final point data. So you'll paste this on the front curve, or the front plane, then we'll make a new reference plane um, that's parallel to the front plane. I offset it about 30 inches so I could see the distance um, just between them, so it was easier to paste. Now you'll sketch on this plane, convert entities and select your two guide curves, but not the points, just the curves. Um, and then hit the check, and you'll see that the three points besides the front two points, or the back point and the front point, were not included in the sketch. That's good, because we don't want those points. So you copy these two, uh, the two splines, make a new part, go to the front plane, and sketch on that plane and paste it. Now you just have your cross section, your front point, and your back point. So now you'll define points starting in the front, working your way back um, on one curve at a time. So I always start on the top and work my way back, putting a few more points near sharper curvature and then evenly spacing them after that. Now bear in mind this was recorded after I actually did the video test or the video recording, so there may be some delay and uh, a bit rushing at time because I just recorded myself doing it and then I'm going back and talking through it. So as you can see, um, it's pretty evenly spaced. You don't actually have to count how many points you're doing unless you really want to. You can uh, account for that afterwards when you're in Excel formatting the point data. Now once you're done with the top curve, you go back to the front and start on the bottom curve. Um, and as you can see, this one has kind of a flatter bottom, um, so you can evenly space the points um, a little further apart. Now the reason I have a flat bottom on this car actually is to um, reduce interference drag and reduce vortex shedding. Um, just one thing you should look into if you're actually doing a super mileage car is probably keeping that bottom flat if you can. Um, again, you'll have to test it to see if it's ultimately better for your uh, constraints. Now that we have that done, close the sketch, select the sketch and go to Tools, Macro, Run and then hit the macro. I'll include this macro in um, the for future generations on the 2012-2013 team um, just so you can have access to it. Now what it does is it uh, outputs all your point data. Now the first point which I'm highlighting in yellow is the front point and the second point which I'm highlighting in orange is the back point. The reason it does this is because those were defined first when you copied your sketch in. So you want to copy that front point over then take all the points that define your top curve, so the first ones going down to where it switches from negative to positive, then copy the back point and put it after that. Now this defines your overall front curve. Now we copy the front point again, now we're defining the second curve, the bottom curve. And you go where the signs change, copy all the points, and paste it after the front point. Copy the back point, and paste it after the end of the points. Now we have to check we have the same amount of points in the top and bottom curve. So we have a count of 32 for the bottom curve and 34 for the top. So I need to delete two points. I try to find some that are kind of evenly spaced or close together and delete those then squish it back together. Now it's easy to see when you're exported your point, point data, if you did it the way I said, you can see where it changes from the top curve to the bottom curve by where the sign changes on the X coordinate. Um, now we select all of our new point data that's formatted correctly, open up, copy it, open up a new worksheet, paste it into square B2, that's important. 
Now, just double checking how many points we have for per curve. We have 32 and two curves. So you put the amount of points per curve in hex a or square a to a1, and put the number of curves you want in square b1. So I have 32 points and two curves. Now I'm just formatting it to get a unit length. Um, you can look at the formula I do on the screen. Um, basically, I'm finding the overall length was 3,029. I don't, I'm not sure what units um, the macro exports in. It might be centimeters. Um, that still seems kind of long. I'm not sure. Um, oh, it's probably millimeters. So now that we have our data now in a unit length instead of a 3,000 millimeter length, we copy those points over on your x and y coordinates. Make sure they're numbers only. You don't want the formula to mess everything up. Then we delete all the other numbers on this text and unhighlight the, um, the points. This is because we're going to save it as a CSV file to get it in ASCII format for ICEM. So I'm just checking what I what point data I was actually getting. So now we'll save this wherever you want. Um, for me, this was a front height study, and it was six inches high relative to the back stagnation point. So just going in and saving. Um, after this, we will open up ICEM and import formatted point data using a uh, replay file. Now a replay file is basically when you've already done the meshing and stuff before and you save the process as a replay file. That means you can go back and um, use this replay file to automatically mesh your geometry if it's similar. Now since all my bodies are similar I can do this and it saves me a ton of time. Um, as you're seeing this process takes about 20 to 30 minutes from start to finish uh, for one parameter study um, specific data point. So say front height 6, that would take about 30 minutes to do. And then if I did front height 8, another 30 minutes. If I had to mesh everything, it would take a lot longer. And if I had to uh, export point data by hand, it would take even a little longer. So now we're opening up my replay, my replay script. Um, and again, I've done quite a bit. This has a moving boundary. Um, oh no, I'm saving my project. Sorry, I'm saving the project as a front height study with a moving boundary. Now we will open up the replay script. Script. So load script file. and then go wherever you saved it. For me it was boundary to edit. I can also put that in the future generations folder uh, for you guys to use if you want it. Now I edit the script file so it opens up the correct uh, format of point data. So I change it from blunt 30 to front 6. That makes And it's in the same folder section so it's all good. So I save that. And then I hit do all. And it does everything I've already done before and it remeshes the geometry. Um, now we just have to close the replay script and we're going to check the quality and make sure everything worked. So as you can see it's the correct height from the ground. It's got about a, I think an 8 inch clearance and it also has a moving boundary incorporated once you get into Fluent. Um, now as you can see this is a common problem when you use a replay script on this particular geometry for some reason. So we have to go back and move the points that define the interior or the, the no section of my my data. I found this is the easiest way to fix it so the mesh doesn't go inside the body when it's not supposed to. So that green triangle defines my body itself. So I move the points just slightly, recompute the mesh, and there you go. The mesh is back outside the body. Um, now we'll hit apply, check the, the quality, and it's 0.919, which is good enough for me. So I save the project. Now we're going to um, import the mesh from blocking. So we go to mesh, load from blocking. Now that that's done, we'll go to output and begin our exporting process into Fluent. 
So go to output, go to little tool chest, change your output solver to Fluent V6, or at least that's what I'm using right now, so you need to actually change it to whatever you're going to use. Uh, common structural solver is ANSYS, save as default, hit apply, and then you go to the little Rubik's Cube thing and you hit yes, and then you'll hit all the little opens and the runs and all the cool little things like that to get it to work. Now I'll continue this 2D parameter study, I'll make sure it's 2D there, um, on my part two of the video, and I thank you for watching and hope this helps.